to stream it live for New Play TV, so there may be some people watching us out there. If you are watching us and you do have questions for the question part of this session, you can uh, ask questions at hashtag many voices info. So you can reach us there and we will respond immediately, uh, which will be exciting for all of us. So the Many Voices program has been changed. Um, Eric, have you ever been part of the Many Voices um, the Many Voices program has been changed, which is really exciting for both Christina, who mm -hmm. runs the program, and myself, um, and um, I'm Haley Fan, the associate producer. And I don't know if Christina Ham, I'm the Many Voices program coordinator. Um, and the, the reason is that we were looking at the program and how we could better serve it um, moving forward in the field. So we had um, a really in-depth survey done and conversations done with leaders in the field, both here in the Twin Cities and also conversations nationally to sort of see where the program can go next and how best we could serve, um, serve the program. And what we discovered uh, sort of unanimously is that uh, in order to really help move the program forward, we needed to increase the stipend of the fellowship. So that has been really exciting for us. Um, this year, it's $5,650, which has um, been an increase from previous years, and we've now uh, been able to bump it up into um, $12,500, um, and $2,500 of that will be towards living expenses. Mm -hmm. um, so we are really thrilled to be um, able to work with the Jerome Foundation and to do this survey and to see what needs to happen in the, in the field, and Christina was very influential in, in that as well. Um, and another thing that really came up as part of the conversation was the idea that mentorship is really important. Uh, so in this change in the program, we're really focusing on mentorship. There's going to be a lot more opportunity to connect with uh, people who are further along in their careers in the field um, and also with producing theaters. So we're going to have opportunities to meet with local leaders um, and also to go see theater and to connect with people nationally as well. So that's going to be an emphasis of the program. Mm -hmm. uh, feel free to come on in. Um, so those are a couple of the, the major changes um, as you see moving forward. And um, we have now the fellowship and the mentorship program. This is our second year in the mentorship. Um, the fellowship program, the mentorship's going to remain just for Minnesota writers, um, whereas the fellowship, for the first time in its history, is now being opened up to be a national program. So we will pick one person um, that is from here, from the um, Minnesota area, and one person could either be from here or can be a national writer. Mm -hmm. um, and similar to the way the program has always existed, uh, selection happens through a national panel. Um, no one from the Playwright Center is involved in that selection process. So um, we are administrators and facilitators in that process, but not people who select the writers. Uh, so now, kind of moving forward, I think it would be great, Christina, if you could walk us through mm -hmm. the application, and that way we can then open it up for questions for here or elsewhere. Thank you. Um, both applications for the fellowship and the mentorship will be due um, on February 7th, so that's the deadline for both of them. Um, the el eligibility requirements for the fellowship includes that you cannot have had more than one play produced, so that means that if it's um, 
a full production would include like having the actors, the director, the production team, all of those people have received money. A showcase wouldn't count as that um, towards a full production. Um, we're also accepting previous participants in the Many Voices program as well. So if you had previously done the program a couple of times already, because the fellowship program is so different, um, we are accepting applications to that program. Please join us. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so we are accepting participants who've been in the program in previous years since the fellowship is so different. Um, also, um, if you are accepted into the fellowship program, you can do the program again. So you're able to apply and participate again if you are accepted. So you have two times to do the program. Um, if you've ever been, for example, a core writer here at the center, or a Jerome Fellow, or a McKnight Fellow, for example, you wouldn't be eligible to apply for this program. Um, the program for the Many Voices Fellowships are look particularly at artists who are at the more nascent stages of their career. So people who've been in Jerome's, McKnight's, core writers don't necessarily qualify in that category. And we also ask that people who are in K through 12 programs um, are not eligible to apply for the program as well or in college programs um, during that time. So, um, so someone who's a recent graduate would be like a prime candidate for something like this. Um, for the mentorship, however, um, this is mainly designed for people who are just starting out in playwriting, who are just starting to get their feet wet. They might be coming from a different medium, for example, like poetry or performance arts or that sort of thing, and are interested in um, learning more about playwriting. And so for that particular program, we provide $1,000 in stipend support. Uh, versus the 12.5 for someone who's take, doing the fellowship. Um, and it's a year-long opportunity for mentorship. It'll be our second year doing the program. And it provides um, monthly meetings with myself. And also, it gives opportunities as well um, to do a suite of our uh, Playwright Center um, opportunities that we have available. So that includes our program that's a one -on, called one-on-one -on -one with the dramaturg which basically means that you as the writer if you've created a piece you would sit down and work with the playwriting professional to give you feedback on the play mm -hmm. um, so that would be free it also includes free classes as well all of our seminars that we offer each month would be free to the mentorship as well participant in addition to our classes that we offer twice a year, our six-week classes are also free. And it would also include a member stage reading that you would schedule um, any time during the year uh, to also do that for free as well. Um, so that's what the kind of the differences between those two programs are. Um, when we look at the application process for these, for example, for the fellowship, um, you can, we have copies of that here for you guys to take a look at as well. And what I'll do. Oh, hi, sorry. You're late. No, that's okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sure. This is the mentorship. go to page five of the fellowship application we can start there um, so basically what your packet would look like would include those following items so um, when you go to our website there's actually an application form that you'll find in the PDF format that you would fill out and then you would at attach your professional resume whatever that looks like um, of your work 
And then you would spend some time addressing the artistic statement that asks the following questions below. Why do you consider yourself an emerging playwright? Why do you want to participate in the Many Voices Fellowship? How will this fellowship aid in your artistic development? And what are your goals during the fellowship? And then the writing sample would include one full-length play that is at least 50 pages um, and has only been written by yourself. Um, so that would be anywhere from a one-act play to a, a full act, to a full-length play. And then it talks about how to name the file, and also it lists uh, the reference forms that you'll also find on our website to give to two people who can speak to your, your work. Um, and those are on the website currently right now. Um, and with the mentorship application, those guidelines are on page four. And I would say the biggest distinction, it asks similar questions in the artistic statement, but I would say the biggest distinction between this is the writing sample portion, because we recognize that the people applying for this particular program are not necessarily playwrights. They're coming from different genres, and so we want to recognize that by um, giving you an opportunity to submit different genres of material. So if you, for example, have um, poetry, fiction, nonfiction, um, screenplays, an excerpt of that, no more than 30 pages of any of those things um, would be submitted and to make up your application for the mentorship program. And um, that's really the main distinction. Everything else remains the same. Um, do you guys have any questions? Um, and this may have been covered already, but can, um, <laughs> some, can a person apply to both, or do you have to kind of assess which um, sort of, where do you fall along the spectrum of experience as far as emerging or um, a beginning playwright? Um, I think that um, you could apply for both, but um, probably you're going to know uh, where you fit along the line because it's the programs are so different mm -hmm. one is really for somebody who um, is newer to the playwriting field and maybe this has experience though um, in the arts as an actor or um, you know as a someone who's done poetry before a lot of the, the people in our current mentorship shop are in that um, in that category um, whereas the person who would be applying for the um, Many Voices Fellowship would be really a career-minded playwright. So somebody who maybe has gone to school for playwriting or somebody who is really working towards the goal of being a full-time playwright. Um, but they're at the earlier stages of that career. Mm -hmm. So I'd say there are really different kinds of uh, programs, the different kinds of people um, would be benefit from those two different programs. Mm -hmm. And I can just speak to the current participants in the mentorship in the mentorship track actually do have a lot of theater experience, but um, mainly as directors and actors. And they've written plays before, but because they've come at it from that angle where it's been primarily working in the production aspect and dabbling a bit in playwright in playwriting they only applied for the mentorship track and that's what they Yeah, I would say you, you're best to apply for one or the other mm -hmm. um, because um, you're going to be reviewed um, in that way and you want to put your best foot forward. So knowing sort of where you sit and knowing your understanding of where you are mm -hmm. in your career, I think is going to make you a stronger candidate in the way that you um, articulate how the program is going to benefit you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so, well, I was just going to ask, so there is a, there is currently a fellowship program this year as well? There is a fellowship okay, program, but it's very different in that it's n not the same level stipend currently. Sure. Mm -hmm. But, but there, it exists. It exists now. And, it, and it's called, it's actually right now we're in the last part of it, but it's called the emerging track. Oh, okay. 
yeah. but what we're calling it right now. Yeah. So instead of giving an emerging track, instead of just having many, before it was many voices with the two different tracks, yeah. we're really saying that this is a fellowship, so it's sort of on the lines of um, what the Jerome Fellowship is, but for writers who are a bit earlier in sure. their career development. So someone who does this fellowship would be a great candidate to then apply for a Jerome Fellowship if they were interested in it. But you can't go the other way around. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wanted to go back to your question again, just to also note that um, the people who are applying for the fellowship track, like Haley said, are going to be people who are a bit more advanced in their play in their playwriting skill set. So, you know, if it's something where you're just starting out or you're still trying to figure it out, then just know that your sample will also be compared alongside those samples. So you want to make sure that you're giving yourself the best opportunity to be as competitive as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and if you did the mentorship track, you would certainly be eligible to apply for the fellowship the next year. Mm -hmm. So would you, you guys assess more so the writing sample or is it the, um, the I guess, experience you've had in your um, career thus far? So say for example, like, yeah, so what is, is there one way more heavily than the other? Mm -hmm. um, do you want to answer this? Um, I would say that they're both weighed pretty significantly mm -hmm. um, and it really depends as we found sitting in on the panels um, who the panelists are each year because the panelists change each year which is a gift to us as artists because I've had my work in that pile as well so I appreciate that but um, it really depends on the makeup but they try to look at both equally like they're not necessarily always looking for the most advanced and superhero of playwrights because they're also looking for well who can benefit the most from this fellowship I find having sat in on a lot of the panels that that's a question that they consider quite a bit mm -hmm. so they're not about trying to give you know if someone's gotten like 10 or 15 fellowships they're not trying to give this person yet another one you know for example they're really trying to be as equitable as they can um, I would say though that with the work sample what might end up coming into play is if they're kind of stuck about who to choose if there's kind of a dead heat in terms of who should get it then sometimes that can be the tipping point is kind of the assessment of the work sample for example. Mm -hmm. um, I would just add to the work sample is obviously really important because it shows you know your voice as an, as an artist and you certainly will be evaluated but um, ultimately it's not a prize it's not like they're giving a prize away for the best play mm -hmm. you know that it's really about picking a playwright who can benefit from the program and that being based on the talent that they see and the potential for talent in the work sample and also their artistic statement and how they see that they could benefit from the program and their experience this far mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, and since Haley had talked about the artistic statement, I would say that all of it kind of weighs in significantly, all the components. Um, the panelists that we select spend a lot of time um, going over the packets and paying attention to how people address the questions and how they, they think they can benefit from the programs that we have here. And so all of those components are extremely important. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Just can you just outline briefly the uh, differences between the actual program components? I mean, I know you're already kind of doing it, but between mentorship, I see the things that are happening there. But for the, what's the difference between that and what the fellows see? Obviously, the stuff is different. But. Um. Um, well, I would say one of the, the big differences is the um, development funds also. So um, if you're in the fellowship um, version, we are expecting that you've written plays before and that you're going to be continuing to write plays during this fellowship year. Um, and because of the amount of the stipend, we're imagining that you're dedicating 
a significant amount of your time to writing. Um, whereas the mentorship, the, the stipend is a smaller amount, and so we know that you're probably going to have to have a full-time job in order to have that, and therefore we'll have less time towards writing. So it may be that in the mentorship it's more of a, I'm going to try this new thing. Um, I may discover at the end of it I don't want to be a playwright. I may discover that I love this. It's exactly what I want to do. I'm going to spend all my time doing it. So it's really a, um, one of the big questions is about time in terms of the programming. Mm -hmm. um, and then with the development funds that you have with the fellowship, we're expecting that you're going to be developing a play and workshopping it at the Playwright Center. Um, and then you'll be involved in, in really specifically in the kind of mentorship that's connecting you with professional theaters because we feel like you would be ready for that. Whereas the mentorship track, you wouldn't necessarily be in that place that you'd want to be sharing your work so aggressively at that point. You, you might still be trying to figure out your voice as a playwright. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, like if you, because I think based off of my experience, um, perhaps mm -hmm. certainly more so the mentorship. Mm -hmm. um, but say you wanted to like get support in either, I know they offer the stage reading, but getting connected with, you know, various, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's theaters in town or different theater companies that might mm -hmm. sort of intersect with your approach or your, um, your style. Like, is there some sort of um, space for that within the mentorship as well? Or? Definitely. I'm, um, we are working right now with two of the mentors who are participating and basically coming up with an artistic year game plan for those things that they want to accomplish. So a lot of my time is spent in the mentorship track actively mentoring these artists who are trying to navigate like what it's like to be a full-time playwright, actually carving out time for writing, which they're not doing right now, they're finding it challenging, whereas someone in the fellowship track has all, I, that wouldn't be a conversation I'm having with them about carving out time every day to write because that's something they're already doing. Um, also, another thing that I'm working with the mentors right now with is um, putting together, working with Haley to put together meetings with some of our artists who are already here, um, who they somehow feel an affinity towards with the projects that they're working on and feel like those artists might be a good fit for picking their brain about what it's like to be an artist in the field that they're in and just having conversations about that. So it's still making connections, but the, what the, the conversations that are had are very different because they're at a very different stage in their, in their career. Um, so there, there's still that opportunity to continue to do that. Right. It, it seems to me that the, you know, the requirement of having less than one play, or no more than one play, mm -hmm. pr fully produced, and then you know, focusing on people that are further along in their careers for the for the fellowship, they seem like a little bit at odds to me, but I understand like what you're saying in terms of these are playwrights that have written a lot of plays but just have only had one produced. Is that what Yeah, I think from our experience in the field, it's actually quite difficult to get a play professionally produced, okay. not just produced anywhere. I mean, okay. when we talk about professional production, we're talking about people being paid, sure. so the playwright being paid, the actors being, you know, et cetera, everybody kind of being paid, which surprisingly, or not surprising, is actually quite difficult. And many of our writers, um, you know, don't, you know, aren't at that stage yet. Okay. Um, Including me, who I've been writing for 20 years. So, so yeah, so it's, a, it's quite challenging. So when you say only one produced, it, you actually find out in the field that that writer could still be someone, you know, who is a full-time playwright, or you know, is a working as a playwright. So um, I would say that this fellowship, um, the fellowship, puts that as a as a guiding post because with our Jerome um, fellowship, it's no more than two, so it's putting that person at a different um, stage in development from the Jerome fellowship, but still um, showing that this person is someone who's committed to being a playwright. Yeah. <coughs> So, well, this might seem like it's splitting hairs, but, um, and this is just kind of talking about like sort of the, maybe someone's 
kind of understanding of the fullness of who they are as artists, you know? Mm -hmm. So say, for instance, you're very much committed to writing original works, mm -hmm. you know, um, and being trained, you know, properly as a playwright to do so, but are also interested and involved in, like, the other elements of creating theater? Mm -hmm. Like, would that kind of somehow make you seem less of a purist as a playwright, or would it be just, like, one of the, you know, no, elements that you create? That's what you're saying. Yeah. Does that make sense? You mean question? if you're more of a multidisciplinary artist, yeah. you say, would that leave you ineligible for Or not necessarily ineligible, um, but like, would it be perceived as that you're not, um, because you're not only a playwright, but do other elements of um, creating theater, does that seem less of a fit as far as what you guys consider playwrights, maybe for the fellowship maybe more so than the mentorship? I don't think so. I think mm -hmm. it's about the excellence of, of you're not, we're not going to, you know, the panel's not going to um, evaluate you based on your other um, pursuits. Mm -hmm. The panel's going to only look be looking at you as a playwright. Okay. So if they see that the work sample is excellent and that they see that there's a lot of promise and they see that your goals and that you've been working towards those goals are in line with the um, guidelines of the fellowship, then I don't think it would matter that you did other artistic Okay, cool. Yeah, you guys just kept on saying playwrights or career players, so I just um, wanted to make sure yeah. that I understood that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank and you. There's, and there's, in looking at the swap of our playwrights who are on either fellowships here or our members here, there's quite a few who um, have other disciplines that they work in besides strictly playwriting. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so that, that, yes, wouldn't that wouldn't be new to the panel. No, yeah, one of our current fellows uh, is a puppet designer and quite excellent in that, but also is now you know working towards playwriting. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that the fact that she is a puppet designer also, in any way, makes her you know less strong a candidate. Mm -hmm. All right. Other questions? Um, what are some of the things that people who've been involved with this program have gone on to do? Um, <laughs> they're all good questions, all questions are good, no bad questions. Um, well, I will talk about um, over the last couple of years, um, since Haley mentioned the woman who's a puppet designer, um, she has aggressively pursued partnerships um, with other theaters, both uh, nationally and internationally. Um, so she's gone on to do work in Prague. Uh, she's done work with Theater Complicite. She just came back from San Francisco doing a play of hers that she developed in our program last year. Um, she is now in London uh, working on a project. Um, she asked for our artistic director to connect her with one of uh, his friends in Chicago at a theater there so that she can learn more about his process and what he does and he let her stay at his place for the weekend and she got to work with the theater and it might lead to her doing a gig there this summer or next summer. <coughs> um, other writers have gone on to uh, create the unit collective here. Um, that's one of our um, theater companies that's in residence here. It's made up of several former members of the Many Voices program. And each, you know, it's about every other month, but they include a company of actors, directors. Each playwright rotates as a producer uh, to put on work each month. And they usually have a full house every month, and they invite a local artistic director or someone to kind of speak on the craft of being an artist. And um, yeah, a lot of work with the local theater community as well. Um, artists have done and made connections with, and also made connections with each other. That's been really important. I think with having been myself a Jerome Fellow here and also I'm in McKnight and I've been a core writer and running this program for seven years. Um, what I've realized with all of these programs is that it's what you make it. So, you know, your experience, if you're accepted, 
may not be the same as yours. Just because you're in the mentorship, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's what the money might be less, but your experience can be equally as rich. And you can be just as aggressive about being in me, Haley, and Amanda's space as you need to be to get those things that you need to make your fellowship year what it what you want it to be. Um, I don't spend any less time with my mentors than I do with the fellows. So that's excellent. Cool. Yeah, I was gonna ask that. I was gonna ask because it seems like if people are creating all these works over the course of the year, like is there like a community of people? And it's good to see that they've done that, and it will be cool to see. You. Is there a show coming up with the unit? What is it called? Um, unit Collective. Yes, unit collective. It, their next show will be Tuesday, December 18th at 7.30 p.m. Okay, cool. I'll try yeah. Like it. Um, yeah, they do really exciting work. Um, yeah, so I would, That that's one thing I would say is that, um, you know, it is what you make it to be. I, um, my question was about the writing sample for the mentorship. Mm -hmm. If you if you don't see yourself in the in the track for the fellowship, but you still have a play that you'd like to submit, it still needs to be less than thirty pages. Yeah. Could it be a sample of a play? Like, say, if you have a play that's longer than thirty. Sure. Okay. Definitely. Definitely. It's really like a thirty-page uh, work sample. So yeah. to give you guys our business cards because we recognize with this type of format that questions come up once you've gone home and you're like oh, I wish I had asked this or you have more time to look over the applications and the website and if there's other questions that you'd have we'd love for you to email us and contact us and, Absolutely. and we also have a sign-in sheet here that we'd love for you to sign in and um, let us have your information so that we can keep in contact with you as well. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. Yes, we do. Enjoy the rest of your evening.